Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, so today, I just kind of wanted to um, show you how I go about making my own sheet music. Uh, we're going to be working with Bach today. Uh, so you can go over to MuseScore, oops, and grab uh, probably the XML is better if you're working with uh, just kind of more of a sound designer and not sheet music. You you can go with MIDI, which is a little bit more of a famous term, I think, but. Uh, so we'll grab that. And then we'll right click. You can open with any sheet music notation software that we want. I get this screen in Sibelius. I hit OK. We have our version. There was this other version I was working with. Let me open up that real quick just to show you a common problem that you might have with guitar. I was originally going to do this version, but uh, I couldn't find where it was on the internet. I might have got it off of imslp.org, which is a free library for public domain music. So we do have an octave problem with this, where you see that the treble clef does have a lower, a little eight underneath of it. Um, in Sibelius, it's a, sort of an easy fix. The command is uh, shift up, or command A, and then maybe command up. You can fix the octave real quick. Uh, and that might also help with tabs. After remove. I guess we'll just go with this version. Just because I, I almost have to solve more problems on this version than the other, so it's almost a better example. Um, Let's see if the tabs transfer into uh, the proper octave. We might have to select it the old-fashioned way, command down, copy that, command back up. I know it's a little bit tricky with the octaves, and then copy paste in. So if you're wondering how I make um, my own sheet music, a lot of it's for students, but it's also just really useful if you're in a band, too be able to uh, be able to make an editable version that is your own and that way you're you know you don't have to disagree and have a bunch of white out and scribble a bunch of stuff out you can kind of make it look really pretty and it's your own version so i could fix a lot of things on here i didn't want to really make this video too long you could kind of stop there because that was the main thing that I might tag this video as is how to uh, turn sheet music into guitar tabs really quickly. Maybe if I wasn't explaining that the whole way, you know, and I was just working fast, that would have taken me like 30 seconds. Um, and if we didn't have the octave problem, it would have been even faster. And guitar is a transpositioning in instrument. So we do have the octave problem in sheet music. I normally get rid of this stuff. Anyways, I guess I'll keep that. But I normally get rid of this stuff because I just think it wastes space and ink. Waste of time, unless you're doing a more complex arrangement. And I like happening it there. But I might put uh, for guitar or something. You know, that way I don't really have to label the stabs. I could put a ranger. Um, you know, a lot of times I'm hiding that stuff, it's like kind of annoying to click on. Command Shift H. Uh, guitar music is sort of hard to notate because there's multiple uh, lines on each staff. Uh, let me say that again. Guitar music is hard to notate because there's multiple uh, sort of like vocal lines on the same staff. Of course, with guitars and vocal, but I'm talking about bass, alto, tenor, soprano. So it's almost like we're notating multiple instruments on the same staff. Uh, Fernando Sor tried to popularize um, grand staff for guitar, never caught on. So we just have to jam a lot of notes onto one treble clef more than <laughs> is ideal sometimes. And that causes that weird rest problem that it's uh, resting from just because we have two notes here instead of three notes. And it wants to really show a rest there, but you know, how much is a person really thinking about rest there? Especially if they're a solo guitarist, uh, nobody. So it's just like, I want to get rid of it because it kind of just looks confusing. Um, and maybe you could also fix this problem another way where you just make those uh, rhythms a longer value. 
Let's see what else would I fix. Could do something fancy where uh, we can change all the letter names. Not change them, but add letter names to all of them. Uh, hotkey for fixing the tab sort of is command down or command up and it automatically figures out what the same pitch would be but on a different string. Yeah, you get uh, question marks for that. So I guess this tab was completely computer generated, right? Because I just kind of plopped it in here and I didn't really make any changes yet. There is a way to set up your own hotkeys in this program, which I find is really nice. Uh, one hotkey that I've been using a lot lately is F10. Uh, that way I can put in my own fingerings. Kind of going by voice. Eh, it's kind of messy with that big gigantic chord, right? And I'd have to sit there and make it look a little bit nicer, but. Um, It looks a lot nicer with like just a melody. Fingerings are definitely an art. Let's just say, for whatever reason, you definitely wanted to use ring finger there. Which I think it would be more like middle finger. So that's how you would do that. Probably Command K. For chord C. I'll do that again. Command K for chord C or C slash A, you know, whatever the correct answer is. Then, what I normally do, let's go over to engraving rules. One thing I do really like about Sibelius is that you can type over here uh, the menu over here. I'm not trying to criticize too hard, but it's like poorly kind of laying out. It's like a layout and appearance. Like those are the same adjectives in a way. Right. And then sometimes notations, but then it's like letter names. Sometimes I'm thinking that's under text because I'm thinking I want to add letter names. You know what I mean? But I get why it's notations, right? It's almost like it's not always where you think it would be. But anyways, you can type over here. Let's type in engraving for engraving rules. I think Sibelius thinks that this is from some other instrument other than guitar, actually, because it, otherwise it would have shown the chord charts automatically, I think. So if we uncheck this box, chord charts will show back up. So I found myself doing that a lot. I also go over here, edit. I really like ink pen at 14 for uh, handwritten chords. I have a hotkey set up, uh, F5, to change out of the chord. I think the hotkey for fixing stem, weird looking stems like that might be X. That's strange. You can see exactly what I mean about not why notating guitar is kind of hard sometimes. It's like trying to show sustain. Um, but showing the details of sustain, if you're a good player, you're kind of concerned about that. But sometimes in the beginning stages of learning the piece, that's probably going out the window for a lot of people that like plus you're kind of forced to move on anyways i don't know get what i'm saying it's trying to show that as a quarter note i think or the b actually is a quarter note and then it doesn't really want to connect those stems because it's a different voice looks kind of 
very strange there. <clears throat> uh, maybe another hotkey is Shift H. Command Shift H. It's hard though. That's what always confuses me. I need to maybe re-record this again when I uh, have a piece that's like throwing more problems at me. Because like, this one kind of came kind of easy. Oh, one important thing is uh, transposing. Because if I hit select all and hit K and then select a key signature D major, it does something that like I don't want. It's such a weird way of thinking. I feel like they should redesign the program a little bit. Because now it's still like in the key of C major, but now it just has to natural out a bunch of stuff. So we didn't really go to the key of D major yet. We just added two sharps and then canceled them all out. I'd do transposing first. Transpose. And then I guess up to D major. Um, okay. It does kind of fix the key signature too. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Catch you on the next one.